Hello. So, one of the things that we have sort of seen off and on um, in sort of many different contexts is how useful it can be to deal with small changes in a variable. So it's one of those things that calculus is sort of meant for, is understanding how small changes in one variable can affect small changes, hopefully, but sort of changes in general in other variables. So one of the areas that we can use this idea or sort of explore this idea further is linear approximation. So linear approximation is ubiquitous. It's used all over the place. Um, in fact, it's used some, some really sort of deep and complicated applications. One of the reasons for this is that computers are not so good at nonlinear things. <laughs> and so a lot of the times, what even if we sort of know the math for uh, nonlinear sort of math that represents something quote unquote better, a lot of the times we still end up using linear approximation because it's much faster and easier. So some areas where this is used, um, neural nets, which is a very popular area right now for things like artificial intelligence and machine learning and all of these sort of deep ideas that are being developed, uh, use linear approximation as one of the fundamental tools that make it work. Um, computational solutions, like I said, computers, not so great at doing nonlinear things. Uh, so one of the things that we sort of do to make that go faster, much faster computationally, is that we use linear approximations that are in some sense close enough for understanding whatever it is that we need to do. Um, control theory. So control theory is this idea of how robots sort of understand the environment that they're around. Um, so we use this for sort of what you might think of like house robots, like Roombas or things like that, but also things like um, getting feedback on artificial limbs and things. These are things that use linear approximation in control theory. And as a final sort of example, fluid dynamics. So um, one of the, the Millennium Prizes, which are these uh, math questions that have million dollar bounties, if anybody can answer them, one of them is understanding how turbulence works. And right now, the best we can do is using a linear approximation of how turbulence works. So that's sort of what we use for the math for understanding how to make planes, you know, stay in the sky and stuff like that. So again, very, very sort of ubiquitous use. They, linear approximation is used everywhere for almost everything in some way at some stage of the computation. So <clears throat> what is linear approximation? So Linear approximation, it gives a way to quickly estimate the output of very complicated equations um, or very complicated formulas by using some sort of anchor point um, where whatever the problem is is sort of easy to calculate at that, at that spot, which isn't the spot we want, um, but then using some tangent line along at that sort of easy to calculate area to get to an approximation of what we wanted. So that's sort of a very vague, weird way of saying things. It might not be clear what I mean. So let's look at an example to see sort of what I'm talking about. So let's say we want to estimate the square root of 10. So doing this is actually surprisingly difficult for a number of reasons. Um, as an interesting side fact, adults, uh, they tend toward linear progression in their head, meaning that um, when you sort of think about like what's halfway between 1 and 10, uh, adults tend to say something like 5 as a halfway point um, because that's the linear halfway point, as opposed to little kids, for example, um, which will often say something like three because that is geometrically halfway um, between the two points. So point being here that when you're looking at square roots, square roots uh, progress geometrically, not linearly, so it's very difficult for a person to understand or sort of estimate something nicely. So we can use linear approximation for this. So the way we would do that is that we want to pick a nearby value that we can calculate nicely and then use a tangent line. So as a sort of starting spot, we would think of this as being a function, right, the square root of x, and we want to know for when x equals 10, right, because if we plug in 10, we get that square root of 10 we want to estimate. But we can calculate this at x equals 9, right? So if we plug in 9, we know the square root of 9, that's 3, right? So this is sort of a nearby point, 9, that is easy to calculate. So thinking about what this looks like then, if we think about what the square root of x graph looks like, this nice curve here, we know the point nearby that 
9, comma 3, right? So 9 is the input, square root of 9 is 3. We want to get some sort of estimate estimate for the square root of 10. So that would be the point 10, comma, square root of 10, whatever that actually is. And the way we would do that, all right, zooming in here, is that we would start by sort of trying to get this tangent line idea, right? So in particular, right, we have the point where we where we can find it, this 9, comma, 3, and then we can get a tangent line through that point, and we can calculate the actual formula for that line, right? Now, notice it doesn't hit the spot that we want, but it seems to be relatively close. So if we calculate that formula, we get this tangent line, right? y equals 1 sixth x minus 9 plus 3. But then we can plug in 10 and get an actual value. So if we plug in 10, we get, right, 10 minus 9 is 1. So we get 1 6 plus 3, or 3.1666666, et cetera, right? So this would be our uh, estimate of what square root of 10 is. Notice, again, they're, they're not the same point. It's not the exact value, it's an estimation, right? So this is the sort of general idea. <clears throat> and again, this the, the goal of this video is, is sort of a understanding of what's happening. We'll go through the actual sort of analytic process, how to do these computations in detail uh, in, in another video. But the idea here is that this is how, this is the sort of picture of what's happening. We get a nearby point like this nine comma three, we build a tangent line through that because now we can calculate it nicely, and then we use the sort of tangent line value and get a sort of rough estimate. Um, this is sort of a little harder to show, right, with static pictures. So we'll do a, a quick animation to show sort of how this works, like how it, what it means to sort of travel along that tangent line. Um, so that's what we're going to do next. Okay. Linear approximation is a process of estimating a difficult to calculate value by using a nearby easy to calculate value and a tangent line approximation from there to the value we want. Let's consider a random curve. Our goal here is to see how this process works. So we will try to avoid getting into any concrete calculations and we'll cover those in a separate video. For now, let's look at two points, A and B. We will assume that a is easy to calculate for our function and b is difficult, like how square root of 9 was easy to calculate and square root of 10 was difficult in our earlier example. The idea then is to calculate the value at a and then travel along a tangent line to estimate the value b. So our estimation will look something like this. Notice that we travel along the dashed line, which is the tangent line, but only between our starting and ending point. This span of x values is sometimes called delta x, like in our derivative formula, or sometimes it's referred to as dx in reference to the differential, which we'll discuss more later. Regardless, these are just fancy terms for the difference in the x values of our points of interest. Again, the idea here is that the point A is easy to calculate with and the point B is difficult. So we use A and then use the derivative to get the slope of the tangent line at that point which allows us to move along that tangent line to get an estimate of the y value of b. Sometimes this estimate can be quite close, as we saw in the square root example before, and sometimes it isn't as close as we might like, as it may appear in this example. But remember, we zoomed in. Let's pull back out and see how close our estimate actually looks. Back at our original scale, we can see that the points are actually much closer than they first appeared. In fact, the actual error for this value is about 10%. So we've seen that linear approximation is using the same techniques we've already used, like the tangent line, albeit with possibly some new notation or vocabulary. We will cover the actual notation, vocabulary, and algebra in a separate video, but Hopefully, this gives a good intuitive understanding of what we're trying to accomplish and how we're trying to accomplish it with linear approximation. Okay, so what do we do? So process of linear approximation, it's essentially nothing more than a tangent line along with some sort of anchor point that we can calculate nicely. Um, so this idea is that we wanna use this linear, hence linear approximation, this linear tangent line estimate the value for our original function 
that is maybe otherwise difficult to calculate at whatever value we're looking at. But the real takeaway here is that the linear approximation is really nothing more than a tangent line. So we've already done stuff with tangent lines, and this is just sort of an application of that thing. So in, in the grand scheme, we haven't really, this isn't a new idea so much as it is a new way of applying that idea. Okay, so that is that.